A warm welcome and hello to everyone. I am Alisha Bajacharya, working as a content writer at WP Entire. The topic for my presentation is creating blog outlines that rank. So first, let's see what we will cover in this presentation. Here, we will look at what is a blog outline, why is creating a blog outline important for ranking, things to do before creating a blog outline, and lastly, how to create a blog outline that ranks. So let's begin. First, let me ask how many of you are bloggers or have an experience in blogging? Please raise your hand. So I see a lot of you have an experience, so you may already know what a blog outline is. But for those who don't know, a blog outline is a structured plan for your blog post. It lets you organize your content and figure out the major things that you will include in your article before you start writing it. Now, you may be wondering why is creating a blog outline important for ranking? First of all, as I said before, a blog outline is a structured plan for your blog post. And this structured plan is derived after a careful analysis of the keywords, their search intent, and your competitors. Now, when you write your content based on that outline, then it's obvious that your article will start ranking. Secondly, when you analyze the search intent and competitors, you are able to know what the readers are wanting in your article. This will make your article content to be relevant, which is a plus point for ranking. Lastly, when you create a blog outline, you are able to figure out the major things that you will include in your article. Now, this will make your content to be organized, structured, improving the readability and user experience, which is also a plus point for ranking. Here, I have included one statistic where you can clearly see that most of the bloggers are creating blog outlines for their blog post, which shows the importance of creating blog outlines. Now, let's move to the topic, things to do before creating a blog outline. So first of all, keyword analysis. Suppose that you have already decided the title of your article that you are going to write. And for our case in this presentation, I will be taking the example, how to install a WordPress plugin full guide. After you decided the title, you have to figure out and collect the different keywords you are going to use using different SEO tools. Now you have to analyze those keywords, such as you have to find the search volume and keyword difficulty. For example, here is a table where you can see the different keywords for the title with their search volume and keyword difficulty. Among them, you have to choose the ones which has high search volume and low keyword difficulty. For example, in this table, the best focus keyword that can be for the article is how to install a WordPress plugin. After doing that, when you use tools like SEMrush, you are also able to find the search intent of those keywords. So our next topic is search intent analysis. So when we are talking about it, does how many of you know what search intent means? Please raise your hand if you know. OK, some of you know, some of you don't. So let me explain. Search intent technically means the questions that are in people's mind when they search something online. So they are the reasons or intentions behind a search. Now, as the definition says, you have to figure out what questions can be in people's mind when they search for your article. In our case, it can be to know how to install a WordPress plugin and also to know the different things that they have to remember before installing a WordPress plugin. After that, you have to also identify who these people are who are having these questions in their mind. In our case, they are the WordPress users who are beginners. Now, after that, you have to exactly find which type of search intent it is that people are finding. And basically, there are four different kinds of search intent. Based on your type of search intent, your blog outline will be different. So the four types of search intent are, first, informational. When people are trying to find information about something online. Second is commercial. When people are trying to find different products or services for purchase. Third is transactional. When people are trying to buy a product or service. And lastly, navigational. When people are trying to 
navigate through a website or web page. Now, does anybody have any idea which search intent, how to install a WordPress plugin can be? Does anybody know? Yes, of course, it is informational because people are just trying to know which, what, uh, how, just trying to know the information about the installation process. Now with that, you can move forward and find, define your goals. Defining your goals must be done in such a way that will express the search intent of the keywords in the best way possible. For instance, in our case, our goal is to point out all the different things that people have to remember when installing a WordPress plugin. And secondly, to point out all the different kinds of method that people have can do to install a WordPress plugin. After you define your goals, the next step is key competitor analysis. Here, you can search for your keyword on search en engines and then collect the different top ranking articles, analyze them, and generate ideas for your own blog outline. For example, you can go through their headings and subheadings, their writing format, the visuals and elements they are using, and even the word count. Let's take an example. You can use different uh, tools online and figure out the word count of those articles. Now, you can take an average word count of them, and that can be helpful for you to know how long your article should be. And accordingly, you can create a blog outline. With going through all these steps, keyword analysis, search intent analysis, and competitor analysis, you can now start creating your blog outline. So that's the topic, how to create a blog outline that ranks. In your blog outline, it must contain various components, and these are the top five important components that your outline should contain. So let's go through them for our article, which is how to install a WordPress blogging full guide. First comes introduction. You have to add an introduction in your outline that will welcome your users, state the main purpose of your blog, and you have to remember to add a table of content that will help the readers to know the main topics that you have included in your article. After that, you have to logically divide your content into different headings. Then, if they are longer, further divide them into different subheadings. And you can even use your keywords for your headings and subheadings. For example, here you can see that things to remember when installing a WordPress plugin can be one heading, and how to install a WordPress plugin can, another, can be another heading. Now, the second heading is a little longer, so you can see that I have subdivided them into different subheadings based on the methods to install a WordPress plugin. After doing that, you can even find different supporting evidences and examples like statistics, examples, and case studies that you can include in your article and mention their position on your blog outline. But not every article will include these things. In how to install a WordPress blogging guide also, you may not need these things. So what you can do is find other sections to include. And one example can be adding an FAQ section which will help your FAQs and the blog itself to rank in your search results. After that, you can even find the different visuals and media that you can include in your article and mention them on your outline. For example, they can be the images, videos, or infographics. Here is an example of an infographic on one of the headings, which is things to remember when installing a WordPress plugin. So, with that, it comes to the last step, which is conclusion and call to action. In conclusion, you will summarize your article, and in call to action, you have to let the users to take an action from your article. It can be liking, sharing, commenting your article, or it can be also to let the people to go through other blogs of your own art blog website. With that, it completes all the main important elements that you have to include in your blog outline. And in this statistic also, you can clearly see that headings and subheadings is the most important element for a blog outline. With that being said, I'd like to conclude my presentation saying that a strategic blog outline isn't just a plan, but it's a map to conquering search engine rankings and engaging the readers. Thank you.